Hi guys, I'm coming to you with another video about how I control my blood sugars. So, um, just really briefly, I started my YouTube channel to document my type 1 diabetic pregnancy. Specifically, I wanted to document a type 1 diabetic pregnancy that was um, very healthy. And what I mean by healthy is that I had very tight control of my blood sugars throughout my pregnancy. However, as far as um, controlling my blood sugars and maintaining a relatively normal A1C, that's something that extends beyond pregnancy. So I thought it would be helpful to um, make a couple videos here that pinpoint my um, essential tips on how I control my blood sugars, um, takeaway points really. If this is a topic that you're interested in, I will link the playlist that all of these videos are in and I will also link the video where I talk about how I lowered my A1C for pregnancy. In that video I go into detail about um, Dr. Bernstein's book Diabetes Solution and if this topic is really interesting to you I would suggest you get that book and read it because he goes into a lot of detail and almost everything that I do is uh, inspired by him by that book um, which he outlines all of his methods in great detail in that book. I will also link information to that book down below. Alright, so here's my next essential tip for controlling your blood sugar, um, and that is predictability. Now, when you have type 1 diabetes, essentially you are responsible to act like a pancreas, like an organ in your body. Um, that is a very difficult task to do. You have to give yourself insulin and you have to judge as best you can based on how many carbs you're eating, how much insulin your body's going to need. Now, it's not that simple because there are about a million variables that affect um, dosing your insulin and, you know, there are a million variables that affect what your blood sugar outcome is actually going to be. So maybe you exercised more than usual and so your blood sugar is going to drop or maybe you're, you have an infection, you're sick, or maybe it's just a weird day, things are off and your food is digesting more slowly than usual. Maybe you're pregnant. There are so, so, so many things that affect your blood sugar. So the reason why I think predictability deserves its own video is because this is in a way probably the most essential um, part about controlling your blood sugar. Because when you add some predictability to your life, what you're doing is removing extra variables that impact your blood sugar control. So in other videos, if you're familiar with my other videos, I'm I follow a low carbohydrate diet based on the recommendations of Dr. Bernstein. However, I think predictability is such a powerful factor of controlling your blood sugar that you can get away with eating higher levels of carbohydrates, not high carbohydrate, but higher than Dr. Bernstein recommends if you do it in a very predictable fashion. Predictability is important for diabetics all the time, especially during pregnancy. So if you want to have a healthy pregnancy as a type one diabetic, one way to really help you out when it comes to blood sugar control is to do almost the same thing every single day. So hypothetically, now this is not a real world scenario, but hypothetically, if you woke up at the exact same time, went to bed at the exact same time, ate your meals at exactly the same time, and had the exact same thing for each meal, you would learn pretty quickly how much insulin you needed to take to keep your blood sugars perfect all day because nothing is changing. Imagine you have a routine where nothing changes. And so pretty quickly you would learn what you need to do in order to control your blood sugars. Now that's not real life scenarios. So, um, one of the ways you can increase predictability in your life and still be a normal human, um, something that I did during pregnancy and continue to do now that I'm not pregnant anymore, you have the predictability there by having that breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, at relatively similar time in the day. And what you do is you always have the same number of carbs and the same amount of protein. So this makes things very simple because you can pretty much bolus the exact same amount from day to day for each meal because you're having the same number of carbs and the same amount of protein. Um, now where variation comes in because we're human and we can't do the exact same thing every day is that you have a list of all of the, you know, all of your favorite approved low carb options, you know, like broccoli, cauliflower, um, fiber crackers, whatever. You have a list of all of your favorite Carb, carb foods and then you have a list of all of your favorite protein foods and you basically just pick what you feel like that day and make sure that you're 
keeping track of the amount. So you can have a different carbohydrate from day to day and from meal to meal, but you want to make sure that the total number of carbs is the same. So if you really feel like steamed broccoli one day, you portion out um, eight carbs worth of steamed broccoli. Uh, the next day, you really feel like asparagus. Um, you portion out eight grams of carbs of asparagus, right? So you can have different foods from day to day, but make sure that the total number of carbs is the same. Same goes for protein. So ideally, you'd want to weigh out your food, um, ounces, grams, whatever um, unit you use, and make sure that you are eating the same amount every single day, but it can be different. It can be eggs, it can be meat, all different kinds of meat. It can be cheese, um, tofu. Uh, I, I enjoy eating tofu every once in a while. So there's the idea behind predictability and um, still being able to keep some type of variation in your diet from day to day. Now, last thing I wanna say about predictability is that um, I know I have friends who are type 1 diabetics who um, keep an eye on carbs but don't eat as low carbohydrate as I do and they still have excellent control of their blood sugars, excellent A1Cs, and the way they achieve this is again by predictability. If you really, really, really want to eat a sandwich um, for lunch, so instead of just your protein and your vegetable, you have uh, your protein, vegetable, and a couple pieces of bread, if you really want to have that bread, if you did that, every single day um, or at least often enough to see exactly how that bread affects you you're eating it at the same time uh, in the same way hypothetically you could figure out the exact amount of insulin you needed to take and the exact timing that you needed to allow that insulin to kick in before you start eating so that you could get away with eating some carbohydrate um, so that is another option if you apply this rule of predictability to your life you can um, really figure out how different foods affect you and bolus for them in a really thoughtful way that makes your post meal numbers pretty good so all right that's my video for today if you have any more questions related to this topic ask them in the comments down below thank you as always for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye